researchers are now calling it an epidemic. It's affecting our health. Heart disease, diabetes. Is loneliness. And loneliness isn't just some mildly unpleasant Depression, say can be bad for you. Smoking 15 cigarettes a day. The isolated and lonely are the invisible in this world. Loneliness and isolation is one of the reasons why people are exploited financially. Who is speaking up for them? And who is seeing them? That is an equity issue. In the three years since my wife has been diagnosed with autoimmune disease, okay. I'm her oh. sole caregiver. There you go. Yeah. It's, it's a small backwoods area of the world, and it really hasn't accepted that people can be a little different. There are a lot of pickup trucks that scream, I'm not going to tolerate you, you know, and so I'm afraid. LGBTQ people are at greater risk of social isolation and loneliness. And part of it is that many of the LGBTQ older adults have really had to hide their lives. How does that affect how you make friends and build a support group? There isn't a support group. There isn't a support group, and there aren't really friends. If someone just says, well, you have each other, how can you possibly be lonely? That's not what we are as people. We aren't just one relationship. I do want to differentiate the difference between loneliness and social isolation, because they're two very different concepts. Social isolation was really the number of people in your network. But loneliness is the difference between what people really hope for and what they have. For some people, solitude is not lonely. Loneliness is what is really associated with very serious health consequences. Loneliness feels, you keep wishing Things that were different than what they are, you know. I wish I lived in near the town. If you've got a car, it's not so bad. But if you haven't, it's hell. Sheer hell. We live in a very rural county. People get isolated very easily. The, a generation of older women didn't ever learn to drive. He was the driver. So now she's stuck. Do you ever wish you'd learned to drive? Well, yes. Years ago, you listened to the husband. The woman didn't have a say in anything. I spent the best part of two years nursing my wife at the end. And when it was all over, I knew hardly anybody. On the day it happens, loneliness starts off really bad. It doesn't matter how many family or close friends you've got around you. Let's say an older man is partner dies, that's an important point to intervene because often women in marriage are the social connector. I can't see me making a new circle of friends. I started becoming interested in loneliness and isolation when it was a little topic. You know, I'm a geriatrician, I take care of older adults. When was the last time you actually went out? 2016 was the last time you were able to... I am humbled by the resilience I see. I have been in this bed six years. Yeah, six years. I don't know how you do it sometimes, Carol. You know, I think it's the mood, the mood that people be in. Some people are moody, you know what I mean? And they, they just don't want to see nobody sometimes. Me, I'm always open to see people. I speak to them, I laugh and talk with them. Some of the strongest evidence is for 
that inner piece that we do is work, like our inner part in terms of um, how we feel about ourselves, how we feel about our relationship in the world. So that is probably part of why she does well. Um, you know, there's no, there's no pill equivalent for that. I have found in our research that if a person has three or more people in their life that they could call on in an emergency, that is a number that really seems to make a difference. I didn't know it at the time, but going to Pride would change our lives. I was able to reconnect with people we had lost contact with. This has been a long time coming, hasn't it? It's not too late to find other people that you can have common ground with. What we would have done differently would have been reached out sooner. It's important to continue to maintain those relationships. And at any point in time in life, it's not too late to build new relationships. Of course, getting to places like that's so good. Yeah, well, especially where you are, yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. If you're trying to help someone else, trying to understand their background, their barriers, but also where their preferences might lie. I've heard of a group called Men in Sheds. The main purpose of it is a meeting place for men, which is a workshop. And obviously the, the, the people that are on their own and lonely, it's a good, great place for them to come. I can begin to see the water above me now. So I would like to have somebody alongside me at home on a more permanent basis. Maybe if I stick at it, that will come in time. <laughs>